energy storage is everywhere and we'll need more and more of it as our electricity demands continue to rise and our energy sources become increasingly variable. Many methods of energy storage exist, but will they be enough? Or will we need help from new breakthroughs? The breakthrough we'll focus on in this video is around quantum batteries. While it's easy to dismiss these batteries as science fiction, I actually want to look into the science behind them so we can learn something new because personally, I think that's a lot more interesting. It is worth adding a caveat though. These batteries have only been tested on an incredibly small scale and they won't be powering our vehicles or phones anytime soon, if ever. Also, much of the recent work is theoretical and highly debated within the top levels of academia. But for me, that's not really the point. I think the science at play is exciting and the principles behind it can help us to understand the planet around us. So please make sure to leave a like if you learn anything new. The word quantum is used to describe the smallest possible discrete unit of any physical property, such as energy or matter. So when looking at quantum batteries, we need to consider things at a very, very small scale. Quantum batteries currently being developed appear to work in slightly different ways, but they all revolve around the same principles. To explain this, let's look at a single atom. This is the atomic model by Bohr. Whilst the Schrodinger cloud model is more accurate, Bohr's model is much clearer for this explanation. As an electron jumps from the inner ring to an outer ring, the energy of the atom increases. This increase in energy is the foundation of how quantum batteries work. As we're only really interested in the energy states of the atom, we'll simplify this diagram even more so it is just a ladder, representing the energy states of the atom. There are a number of ways to get an electron to a higher energy state, which for a quantum battery is equivalent to charging it. The main way of doing this for quantum batteries is with a photon, which can be achieved by shooting a laser at the quantum battery. In this study by James Quash and his colleagues, the quantum battery consists of a semiconductor in a micro cavity between two highly reflective surfaces that help guide the light. When the photons from the laser interact with an atom, it can push an electron to a higher energy state. Therefore, the battery has been charged. I should mention that in solids, which are being discussed for quantum batteries, these energy levels merge together into two bands, called the valence and conduction band. For now though, let's just look at two energy levels for simplicity. An interesting thing to know here is that other energy sources can also push an electron to a higher energy state. And this is why flames glow. The heat in the flame pushes an electron up to a higher energy state, and because it is not stable there, it falls back down, in the process releasing the energy as a photon, which is seen as light. The distance between the two energy levels is also related to the wavelength of light that is emitted. This is why some flames burn with different colours, because the atoms have different size gaps between their energy levels, so different wavelengths, or colours, of light are produced. You may be wondering what happens if an electron tries to jump to a place between the energy states. Well, that's just not allowed. If light comes into the quantum battery with a wavelength that doesn't match the gap between the atom's energy levels, it won't be absorbed and the laser will pass straight through. But a second question remains. What is stopping the quantum battery from discharging? It is an inconvenient fact that if given the chance, electrons will jump back to the lowest energy state they can. So to stop this, the quantum battery can be put into a dark state. The name comes from the fact the atom can no longer emit or absorb a photon. However, it's not so simple to get an atom into a dark state. And the practicality of this within quantum batteries is hotly contested. Nevertheless, there are methods to achieve this. When an electron is pushed up to a higher energy state, it actually forms an electron hole pair. The electron wants nothing more than to go back to their hole and be reunited. But in a dark twist, it is possible to change the quantum characteristics of the electron so that the electron no longer wants to recombine. The quantum characteristic commonly used is spin, which gives the name spin forbidden transitions. This can be done with magnetic fields, but there's a lot more work to do on this to make quantum batteries a reality. And then when we want to discharge the battery, the atom would have to be taken out of the dark state. It is not clear how best to extract the energy here 
as an emitted photon may not be of most use, though maybe this could be blended with the technologies from solar panels to convert the energy directly into electricity. Scientists from the University of Adelaide have discussed how quantum batteries could be applied to the sector of solar energy, as energy from the light could be simultaneously harvested and stored. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and comment if you think quantum batteries will ever make it into the real world.